वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम दोलिका ज्योति शर्मा आई एम वर्किंग एज एन एंड असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन इंग्लिश एट गुवाहाटी यूनिवर्सिटी द प्रेजेंट मॉड्यूल इज ऑन द इमाम एंड द इंडियन बाय अमिताभ घोष एंड विच इज इंक्लूडेड इन दिस पेपर ऑन इंडियन राइटिंग इन इंग्लिश बॉर्न इन कैलकाटा इन द ईयर नाइनटीन फिफ्टी सिक्स अमिताभ Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and Iran. He did his schooling from the Doon School, graduating from Delhi St Stephen's College and later joining St Edmund Hall, Oxford for higher studies and receiving a PhD in social anthropology. Earlier he had worked as a reporter and editor of uh, of a daily Amitav Kosh taught in Delhi University, Columbia University and the American University in Cairo as well as in many other institutions as visiting faculty. Presently residing in New York City, Kosh is now dedicating his time mostly to writing. Kosh was shortlisted for the Booker Prize with his fictional work The Sea of Poppies and was conferred with the Sahitya Academy Award for The Shadow Lines published in 1988 and the prestigious Padma Bhushan in the year 2007 by the government of India. The Indian born writer has been contributing a lot towards contemporary Indian writing in English. In the literary world, Kosh is known for his journalism, travel writing and fiction. To talk about Kosh's novels, they all vary in their subject and treatment. His versatility is manifested both in his fiction and non-fiction. It is seen that he seeks a neutral place on this earth beyond any demarcation of borders through his writing. The best known novels of Kosh are The Shadow Lines published in 1988, In an Antique Land published in 1992, The Calcutta Chromosome in 1996 and The Glass Palace. in 2000 Kosh employs a complex narratives in fig in his fiction as a strategic measure to explore the question of identity at the same time being a scholar with anthropological training his novels exhibit his keen observation of the characters settings and histories from a close proximity for Kosh the novel is a hybrid genre unquote as he as it cannot be straight jacketed in a single pattern an example of this is in an antique land which is both travel writing and a novel so kosh in many of his novels seeks to create of the novel a very open ended genre a novel which traverses the borders of itself as a form kosh readers are given full freedom to interpret his characters as well as the happenings and expression of his novels the motif behind the varying issues that are dealt with in his novels seem to have emerged from his realization of the quote dubious nature of the borders unquote between people nations and genres it is so that we find him on one hand examining ideas of reasons and the association of science and technology with those in say for example the circle of reason in 1986 and on the other hand his postmodern concern with the displacement of white supremacy giving non whites central position in his ibis trilogy the issue of migration in the post colonial era another attribute of postmodernism constitute the theme of the hungry tide which was published in 2004 in a similar vein in an antique land is also carried on with the same basic foundation of not being fitted into any particular framework as i've already said uh, in an antique land is both fiction and travel writing and autobiography uh, its narrative is divided into two parts one dealing with his travel experiences in the nile delta and the other the reconstruction of the lives of a jewish trader abraham ben yidu and his slaves ashu and bomma in the 11th century 
In this work too, Kirsch merges narrative, travel, autobiographical pieces and history. The Imam and the Indian, like in an antique land, cannot be defined generically. It is one of his non-fictional works, a miscellaneous collection of journalistic and scholarly articles and lectures published in the year 2002. The book is named after the first article included in it. In the preface itself, Koch declares that the pieces are heterogeneous by nature and they cannot be put under the same label. As in the introduction, he argues, quote, in the circuitry of the imagination, connections are of better importance than disjunction, unquote. He further remarks that the pieces are written in between his other works, except for the initial five narratives, which were written in his utterly attentive phase. Every piece in the Imam and the Indian entails a particular issue or story behind it, which he later develops into full-fledged ones in his other works. For instance, the first five pieces are based on the period of his research and he particularly mentions about an Egyptian in Baghdad, within quotes, which he wrote during the Gulf War. The autobiographical piece of the horrible aftermath of Indira Gandhi's assassination in Delhi is, refer is rendered in The Ghosts of Mrs. Gandhi. In The Imam and the Indian, Kosh talks about his experience in Egypt, the period when he was there for his research work. It also includes a translation of a short story, Kshudita Pashan, The Hunger of Stones by Rabindranath Tagore. In the Empire of the Soul, a review of the Babur Namas, he reviews the first autobiography by a Mughal emperor. Though it is difficult to put the essays in a single thematic structure, a careful reading of the pieces can bring forth the implicit political, social and cultural concern of Kosh. The fact that today's world is about interaction, communication and development culminating in a globalized world seems to be the underlying subject matter in a number of pieces in the collection. For instance, large-scale migration of people taking place between continents due to social, political and economic reasons has faded the borders. This is something that he takes up uh, in the shadow lines as well, where the context is the partition of uh, the partition of erstwhile Pakistan into uh, into Pakistan and Bangladesh. There are many other factors too contributing to this matter. Globalization has also given rise to a uniform world order as people belonging to different continents are living together. As in the piece, The Ghat of the Only World, Agha Shahid Ali in Brooklyn, Kosh traces the life of Agha Shahid Ali. The Kashmiri American poet Agha Shahid Ali was born in Delhi and was brought up in Kashmir. In the year 1975, he migrated to Pennsylvania. One of the dominant themes of Ali's poetry is the meeting of cultures. Uh, for example, Agha Shahid Ali uh, uses ghazals. He writes, uh, he wrote English ghazals. And for him, the ghazal is one of the reminders of such travel and such meeting of cultures and the disappearance of borders in the sense that the ghazal has traveled from uh, from uh, Persia in the past to India and has traveled in the 1960s to America where poets like Adrian Rich wrote ghazals in English. So who is talking about quote voyage between two continents unquote and the building of Shahid reflects on the microcosmic view of the transcontinental milieu in which Ali was living. 
the overwhelming fragrance of Kashmiri food is in, invades the dour grey interior of the elevator. Shahid's apartment would always be filled with vibrant sounds of Indian music and conversation in the building in which people of different cultures and backgrounds lived. On the other hand, as a postmodernist who had been traveling to alien lands, Ghosh juxtaposes uh, such a scenario with that of cultural disintegration, imperialism and hegemony, waning human relationships, a materialistic outlook of the people, hankering for security and love, diaspora and so on. In the title essay, The Imam and the Indian, Ghosh records how a country today is measured in terms of destructive forces rather than productive ones. As the Imam says, quote, we have guns and tanks and bombs and they're better than anything you have. We are way ahead of you, unquote. Ghosh realizes that the superiority of the West has become an acceptable fact among all. No matter either it be an Indian or an Egyptian or anyone else, their preoccupation with Western hegemony is a reality of the present times, the truth that Ghosh aptly grasps. For example, in In an Antique Land, Ghosh describes how the Egyptians, uh, they, uh, they come to know about India through American television. So their idea of India is formed by America, by Western media rather than uh, any first-hand knowledge of India. Similarly, uh, here again we find this intervention of the West. This preoccupation with Western hegemony as a reality of the present uh, and Ghosh's opinions on it seem to be reflected in how the Imam is represented in the book. The Imam's refusal to acquaint Ghosh of his traditional healing process is perhaps for the reason that old customs are not trusted anymore. The customs and traditions which constitute the identity of an individual, community and a nation have now become obsolete. As an anthropologist, Ghosh's visit to Egypt is in search of a genuine and settled culture bewilders him when he finds the restlessness prevailing there, as the villagers seem to be the, quote, airline passengers in a transit lounge, unquote. So much has Western media uh, uh, seeped into their cultures that they are losing touch with their own culture. The Egyptian in Baghdad tells the tragic story of a migrant Nabil who moves to Iraq in order to earn money to give his family a comfortable life. Unfortunately, he never returns to live in the pakka house that was being built with his money. Uh, Nabil goes missing without any whereabouts. No one knows where he uh, has ended up. The awful situation of the Egyptian migrants in Iraq as they live there in high risk of being killed any moment by the Iraqis has been illustrated in this piece. As the piece is written shortly after the Gulf War, the Iraqis acted wild and blamed the Egyptians to have taken advantage of their situation of being indulged in the war. They were accused of taking their jobs and money and so in their wildness would kill the Egyptians, snatching their papers so that no records remain. They were very hostile to the Egyptians. On a lighter note, another aspect of Egyptian life is portrayed in the interesting piece called The Relations of Envy in an Egyptian Village. In an otherwise peaceful atmosphere of a rural Egyptian life, not much affected by the outside forces, having their own principles of living, there is the practice of witchcraft that still prevails. The solidarity between the people in the village, as they say, we are one, is amply replicated through their sharing of, quote, the same dialect and the same cultural ethos, which distinguish them from the people of the cities, unquote. The close-knit community of the village are dependent on each other 
in spite of the relation of envy, which, according to Ghosh, is itself a relation between the rich and the poor. The upshot of migration is again depicted in a very poignant manner in the piece The Tibetan Dinner. While at a dinner organized for a Tibetan cause at a restaurant at Manhattan, Ghosh comes across a Tibetan Buddhist monk. The monk and the momos served at the restaurant takes him back to his college days in Delhi when he and his friends used to frequent the shacks of the Tibetan refugees where they served their local delicacies like momo, noodles and rice beer known as chang. Migration has been a driving force of the last century and the fact is that whether it is forced or self-willed, the sense of displacement and nostalgia permeates the minds of those who are away from their homeland. Ghosh's acquaintance with Aha Shahid Ali and his poetry made him realize that the poet could not be away from Kashmir ever. In fact, Aha Shahid Ali used to term himself as a triple exile in reference to his own status as an exile, as a diaspora. Shahid lived in Kashmir through his poetry, though being away from the place. His poems are filled with images from Kashmir, filled with the anguish that the crisis in Kashmir has brought every day into the everyday lives of the people. Shahid had experienced rejection and disappointment as well as unhappiness for being a Kashmiri Muslim during his Delhi University days. So he was happy to be in a place where people were together for the good things in life. As a diasporic writer, Ghosh thus puts forward in the cross-cultural perspective such an idea of space for which a person has to move to another country in search of that security and love which he is unable to receive in his own. In the ghost of Mrs. Gandhi, when Ghosh recounts his first-hand experience of the after-effects of Indira Gandhi's murder in Delhi, the idea of space is called upon again. The dreadful face of violence that Ghosh witnessed being inflicted upon the six raises the pertinent question that in a country where people of various ethnicities, culture, religion live together, can anyone become so brutal to their own people? The plight of the six being so much insecure could only be felt by the ordinary people, referring to the ones who did not belong to any group or political life. Ghosh also expresses the dilemma of being a writer who was supposed to be reproducing such a situation of terror or would be writing about the ones who took risk to help the victims. Though there have been other anomalies too behind such a ruthless act of violence, the six who had been living in Delhi for a long time could feel the sense of alienation triggered by an incident which they might not even approve of or had not even been aware of. In the essay, The Greatest Sorrow, Time of Joy Recall in Wretchedness, Ghosh again throws light on another dismal picture of civil violence meted out in places like Kashmir, Sri Lanka and even America for that matter. The fact that Ghosh does not conform to the postmodern condition where people and culture cannot be defined with their distinct identities is also evident in the essay Petrofiction the oil encounter and the novel. The identities are lost somewhere in the name of a global culture and technology. At one hand, the system, which Ghosh regards as the vicious one, has brought slavery to, into practice, whereas a particular segment is getting rich day by day. This is what is happening in the present scenario. Ghosh's digging of history in the slave of MSH6 through archival material to tell the story of the slave Boma is read as a resistance to such Western hegemony. This was in fact uh, part of uh, Ghosh's PhD thesis at, at, at Oxford. Here, Ghosh seems to have affirmed the 
emergence of world literature as in the piece as also in the piece the human comedy in cairo uh, he talks about then in that essay about the recognition of arabic literature with the winning of the nobel prize by the writer naghib mahfuz in the year 1989 in march of the novel through history as well kosh accepts the novel as an international genre which does not restrict to any boundaries irrespective of variation in language and culture at the same time in the diaspora in indian culture kosh regards the repressive action of the government of india uh, with regard to the banning of the of an area of darkness by v s naipaul and the satanic verses by salman rushdie as something uh, not to be approved of the colonial mentality of belittling ideas and responses is thus revealed through this essay as he thinks that it is always through the mediation of london that the relation between modern india and its diasporic population is sustained the assortment of pieces in this work of kosh takes the readers to different territories together the time frame of the essays varies too which seems to be the critical tactic he employs to connect his work to a larger perspective his range in dealing with different subjects is evident as he moves from serious topics to the lighter ones as in four corners he mentions the point in america in which four american states meet those being new mexico arizona colorado and utah he further mentions that it is a favorite haunt for the ones who are interested in road trips the recreational vehicles or rv he notices are named after native american tribes the essay also bears testimony to the fact that all borders are subjective as it is found that tourists though they throng to this place attracted by its beauty and also to view coat the magic of the spectacle of two straight lines intersecting and coat the division is hardly noticeable in another essay categories of labor and the orientation of the fellow economy kosh's focus is directed toward the social relation within the fellowing community which form their process of labor the global reservation notes towards an ethnography of international peacekeeping is an anthropological study on the sileti un peacekeeper who had been assigned with the task of digging out the khmer rouge members in cambodia becoming accustomed to the cruelty around them kosh thus bestows responsibilities over the good things as to convey in shahid's works words to remove all sorts of ignorance from the minds of the people so we can conclude from a reading of the imam and the indian uh, that uh, ghosh contests certain grand narratives of nation national identity borders political borders between nations uh, which is very much a part of post colonial and post modernist interventions into these areas uh, the imam and indian also displaces in its own way the western hegemony that otherwise were, uh, otherwise uh, inscribes every walk of life not to, not only the political and economic but in but the everyday life as well for example in an uh, in an antique land in in an antique land kosh uh, speaks of an egyptian lady a fairly old lady who asks kosh about uh, about the practice of his community the hindus burning their dead and she is appalled at the images that uh, that she has come across from western media so kosh uh by looking at the everydayness of these uh, of of such interventions is actually questioning 
uh, questioning the uh, what would for want of any different uh, and want of any better name would be a new, uh, would be almost a new colonial in nature the new colonial presence of America and the West in the everyday life of uh, previously colonized nations. So in the Imam and the Indian, uh, we find autobiographical, anecdotal narratives uh, juxtaposed with uh, critical discussions, reflective discussions on the question of politics, uh, politics, writing, nationhood, the West, on all these terms. So the Imam and the in Indian becomes a compendium that, as has been pointed out, uh, transcends the borders of its genre. It's not merely non-fictional. It brings in elements of fiction, autobiography, anecdotes, everything together. And therefore, uh, can be said to be truly postmodernist in nature, as uh, Ghosh's other writings, other works are. Uh, Amida, of course, also, however, uh, unlike Salman Rushdie, who uses magical realism, who uses more overt postmodernist techniques in the use of language, however, writes in a relatively simpler, direct prose style, which, however, uh, is not to be taken very simplistically. It is also, it also embodies, like Salman Rushdie does, although it does in a very different manner. It also embodies the central preoccupations of writing from the margins and maybe also looks at whether the margin can at all become the center. Thank you.